All right. Um, what's up, guys? It's HCWC, The Click, C Farmer, Cody, whatever you want to call me. And Shane. And in the background playing Diablo. This guy. Yeah. Yeah. If you didn't hear that, he's like, yeah. Uh, uh, he, he does that sometimes. All the time. All the time. <laughs> Anyways, this is our review on Evil Within so far. We're three chapters in. Yeah. Uh, Shane's only gotten to play once. I've gotten to play twice. I'll get to play the next one. He gets to play the next one. Hopefully it starts picking up. Yeah, that's what they said. That's what I've that, heard. Yeah, that's what, it, yeah, what I've heard too. Right now, I'm not going to lie, when we... It took us two <laughs> videos to get through chapter uh, three. Yeah. They're just blended together, to be honest. It took us a long time. We're not that good gamers, I would say. Yeah, like, I do better. This is an extremely challenging horror game, to yeah, be honest. it is. Giving myself credit. Like, uh, when I think back to other games we played, like, in our, our Let's Plays and just, like, challenges, like, like, the Guitar Hero Challenge, you beat me so much beforehand. Right. But when it came down to it on the video, I buckled down and I got it. Usually I'm like that. But I've noticed this game is really challenging to me when I'm concentrating on being recorded. Yeah. I it does. Do, but. No, yeah, it does make it. I I was talking to Skyler the other day, and I was sitting there, and I was like, this game looks so much more intense because you know how we have to do our editing and stuff like that. Yeah. While I was watching just the game footage without our audio or anything like that, it looked so much more intense and it's just the little things that we didn't notice while yeah because we're sitting there interacting with each other and then trying to focus on the game with each other but the last two chapters have seemed like just getting from point a to point b yeah and, and i i personally don't really like that i know i don't either we, i'm not a left for dead fan yeah no so. i've never i've never really liked that type style of gameplay especially in a horror game i want something out of it yeah because, I mean, that's kind of, if, if it's just point A to point B, it's more like a survival. Yeah. If you want horror, it's got, there's got to be some element where right. it affects yeah, I mean, you to some extent. I don't remember who we were talking. I think it was me and Joseph. Was, no, it was me and Eddie. Me and Eddie. Yeah. We were talking, and uh, I asked him, and I said, have you played Left for Dead? And he said, uh, yeah, I'm sorry that I keep going to this Left 4 Dead reference. But I was like, and he's like, yeah, it's a great game. I was like, would you consider it a horror game? He goes, no. He's like, it's not really that scary. There's no backdrop. You know, there's yeah. nothing to really go off of other than it's just a first-person shooter just in a different type of scenario. Yeah. It's just a bunch of things to shoot at. Yeah, it's, it's, exactly. It's like any other. It's point A to point B. It's like Call of Duty. Zombies. And with uh, the Resident Evil and Silent Hill, what I've liked about them, why they're, you know, my two favorite uh, horror game genres, is because they kept the storyline. Yeah. Even and though Silent Hill jumps back and forth, but they have a storyline in every game. And I feel like if if you have something, it doesn't always do this, but if you have something to follow, like a storyline, uh, you kind of follow with it. In, right. the, in the sense of it makes you want to continue. Yeah. It, well, also in the sense of uh, you s like like a story starts at one point and they go through kind of this change and ends up at a different point. You kind of do the same thing with the story, right. where you you just you have this feeling at the beginning of the game and then by the end it's something that has affected you in your life. That was amazing. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, which, like I said, a story doesn't always do that. But I feel like a good story should, whether yeah. it's horror or not. Yeah, which I'm, my favorite games are horror games, <laughs> like, period. But if there's a game with a great story, I'll play it. Because, I mean, I'm not into multi-shooters as much as I was when I was younger. Yeah. Mainly because it's just too linear, I guess. And yeah. it gets old after a while and it pisses me off. Which this game completely <laughs> pissed me off. <laughs> Yeah, I think you'll get that feeling from the video. If you haven't seen Chapter 3, go check it out. <laughs> yeah, like, I don't know, I, I think, I don't know. There's little things that I, like, 
notice, like as I'm walk, I, like as I'm editing it and stuff, that we didn't notice right then and there. Yeah, and I think that's something like even if you're not interacting with other people while you're playing uh, a game, because I know when I have no one right there to interact with, that kind of zone into the game, and I'm playing it. But I have noticed that uh, if you go back and watch it, even if you're playing by yourself. You notice a lot more stuff oh, yeah. um, than you did when you were playing it. The, I think I'd have to show you, but in chapter two, when you start off, if you haven't seen chapter two, I'm not trying to go off spoilers. You shouldn't be watching this review. Yeah. So go back, watch chapter two before I say this, because if not, then you're completely fucked. But anyways, when you go from uh, when you get out of the ambulance and stuff when it's on fire after the whole, you know, you think you're going crazy scene yeah. thing. You got out and you started walking and then I seen something shining and it looked like a box. Huh. And you completely kind of like passed it. Yeah. Like the little things that I noticed like that. Yeah, and it, it happens all the time. Like uh, when I watch you play, sometimes I see things that you don't see, but I, I try to point them out while we're there. Right, I but didn't notice there's, it. There's times that Neither one of us sees. Yeah. I like how we talk like we're the only ones that do the video, and John's always in all of them. He's just so quiet that we just never remember that he's there. Yeah, it's like. Sometimes I do forget he's there until he says something, and then I'm just like, wait a second. <laughs> John's here. <laughs> That's kind of creepy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I'm, I'm satisfied with the, the gameplay of it. Oh, yeah. I, I cool love it so far. But. Like I said, I just I want that story, that, that kind of drive to want to play it. And just because of that, I hope it picks up. I've heard that it picks up at chapter right. four, maybe, maybe chapter six, I'm not sure. Right. We're gonna finish it, but. Yeah, we'll finish it no matter what. Yeah, but I'm, I'm just, it's my personal hope that it, it picks up rather well. Yeah, maybe, I don't know, maybe it's too early for us to be judging this game, but the reason I feel like we want to do this review now is because we, if it seems like we get a little bit bored with the gameplay, it's because it feels too much like it's just a straightforward game. Right. And honestly, as far as this video, I feel like it, it's a good idea because you're you're kind of getting our, our first impressions. We're not very far into the game and it's this is just our first impressions. I think we're going to do one at the end after we finish the game and, and that will kind of give you an idea of how it's changed and what's made it better or worse for us. And I would like to start doing that for a lot of new games. Just Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah. I feel like that's me. I know me and Noah did HDWC Afterplay on Outlast, but that's about that's about it. If you haven't checked out Outlast, go check it out. Yeah. Uh, it's a little laggy, but uh, our screen capturing is getting better, so yeah. Check it out. See if you like the quality of it as far as our stuff. Yeah, if you don't, just go watch PewDiePie or something. Yeah. But I I rather think that I'm, I'm, I think that it will pick up, and I hope that it will pick up. Yeah. But I have this, like, nagging in the back of my mind going, it's not going to yeah, and it's just like I really hope it does. I don't. I feel like right now, like not even jump scares aren't like what I like in a horror game. I like jump scares. Don't get me wrong; they're exciting and they're spontaneous, and you're like, "Oh fuck!" You know, it makes you, you know, intent. You know, makes it intense to the point where you're nervous and you're trying to get around. I like that, but what I really like is seeing like good story and like good things that kind of mess with you mentally. Oh yeah. So like the first chapter did that for me. Oh yeah. But the I second and third chapter have just been jump scare kind of things. Yeah and, and not even to that honestly I think. Uh, I mean it's only really jump scare when you don't know someone's there and it just kind of they appear. Yeah and it's not even I wouldn't even say like yeah like you said I wouldn't even say it's like more of a jump scare kind of thing. It's more of a Intense feeling of hoping that you don't die. Yeah, which I did a lot. <laughs> like, uh, you you clearly see all the people, but you just I don't know. It's kind of this feeling of I just don't have enough bullets, or 
Or yeah, I, I don't do have that. enough weapons. I do like that. Um, yeah. Resident Evil 4 kind of gave off this sense of not having enough ammo ever, so you have to conserve your ammo and use it for the right time. Okay, I was about to say, I've never felt like I didn't have enough ammo in uh, Resident Evil 4. But then again, I was always really good about um, shooting them in the leg, kicking them down, and then knocking them to death. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> like, you had to figure out a strategy in Resident Evil 4. If not, then you were... I can't tell you how many times when I very first played that game, like the first time through, without... Yeah. Um, without knowing really yeah, what was going on. Yeah. That, uh, I can't tell you how many times I was just caught running around without bullets, without health, without grenade, without anything, you know? Yeah. And this is kind of how it is, you know? You shoot, but it, like, it, I don't know. I don't like, I guess it gives off more of a realistic effect if you're running, you get out of breath. But the problem mm -hmm. is, is I don't like when they stop yeah, it'd be better if they like slowed down, started breathing heavy, and like you couldn't dash, but you could still move. Move because honestly, anybody in an intense thing has their adrenaline going. Mm -hmm. You're gonna, I mean, but in this game, deaths are more realistic. You die a whole lot easier. That makes it harder. Yeah. And um, I think with your health now, you you can only take like three hits. Each one takes you down a third of health. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I mean, like the old Resident Evil games were kind of like that. But yeah, and these the newer ones, four, five, and six, you kind of like, oh, I got hit. Take okay. a couple bullets. Yeah, take a couple bullets, run in, kill them all. This one you take like two and you're, you're done. Yeah. And there's count on countless times and on countless situations where if you get caught by one of the enemy, no matter if it's a person with a chainsaw or just a flunky, then you're probably going to die. You have no chance of living. Yeah. So you might as well just accept it and then start the level over. And I actually think that's something that I saw when, when we were watching, like I said, we were finishing it, it was finishing up editing uh, Chapter 2 right before we recorded this. So it'll be out, and 3 will be out for you guys. But I did notice that um, I, I was captured by one of the smaller lackeys in there, and, like, there was no... Right. chance. I mean, she just stabbed me and I was dead. Yeah. And and that that does add a sense of like this t I guess you could say an underlying terror or an underlying fear because you know you could die. Yeah, but it's not that like in Resident Evil and Silent Hill they always had those little people uh, I call them little people. They're the same size as you. Not necessarily. Some of them are half fun. Right, but <laughs> what I'm saying is, is, like, you have these things that you can kill really easily, you have these things that are kind of harder to kill, and then you have your bosses. Yeah. This, just strictly all the way through, everything is a threat, and you know, it's like, Outlast, a, a, this gives you the option to fight back. Mm -hmm. I like that in some games, and some games I don't. Third person games are kind of, I feel like you need to be able to fight back. Yeah. First person games, uh, when it comes to horror, I feel like you shouldn't be able to fight back. Because it gives more of a sense of you being, you yourself so, being helpless. Right, yeah. and that's what I liked about like Outlast and Amnesia. Um, they gave the sense of if you were actually in that situation and there's these things. Would, I mean, honestly, would you be able to fight back? No, your best chance is to run and hide. Yeah, and it gives it. It's cool because they do that kind of in this, but it gives you the option to fight back. But then again, it is harder to find ammo and shit like that. So your chances of fighting back are you need to run away. And it's kind of hard to fight back because, like, like yes, I, I realize the old Resident Evil, like Resident Evil 1, you had to bring the body sort of later when you came back, they'd be runners or whatever. Right. Well, in this, you can shoot them in the head and literally blow off half their head, but if you don't burn their body right there, they will get back up and come after you. So there's kind of this sense of your bullets don't even really finish them off. Right. Uh, you have to burn the body, and if you don't have matches, then all it is is putting up your death, pretty much. Gives you a chance to get away. So right. I guess I guess it's good to have in the case of an emergency. Oh, but, yeah. but in the case of just running around, if you see see one, if if you're playing the game, my advice is to hide, let him pass, and move on. Because yeah. I mean, if you can conserve that ammo, it's very yeah. helpful. It's your best bet to conserve ammo. Make sure you always try to find. Don't spend most of your time fighting. Spend most of your time figuring out what you need to do, 
finding checkpoints so that way whatever you gain from trying to figure out what you need to do, find checkpoints so that way you don't lose that when yeah. you do die because it's inevitable. Yeah. And and another thing is if you're if you're good at stealth kills, always take it over a over a oh, yeah. other kind of kill. It's uh, it saves ammo. Uh, it instantly puts them down if you have matches. You can instantly burn them. So so it's it's a really good idea if if you think if you're good at it. I would say that I'd say that. Okay. Yeah, that yeah that's probably like your best way to go. Is what I struggled in part you know chapter three is always trying to stay under the radar. Yeah. Which in chapter three I found impossible. But then again, I'm not the best you know person to be sneaking around. Well, yeah, it, but it, it kind of is because uh, until you hit that checkpoint that... Uh, the chainsaw uh, guy? Huh? You're talking about the chainsaw guy? Well, not even that. Like, the chainsaw guy did draw everyone there. That was impossible. But also, even, uh, like, when I, re I remember the doctor running out telling you to open the gate, and as he runs out, no matter which way you go, there's people there. Right. They exactly. find you. Instantly. Yeah, they find you. It's and, and eventually you did get away from them, you reached the checkpoint before the chainsaw guy where you were hidden from them, and you were able to kind of start sneaking around and see what was up. Which I feel like that's part of why you didn't see, notice the chainsaw guy the first time. It's because you had the people already, they have already saw you there, you were just trying to get away from them. Yeah, any noise that was being made from the chainsaw guy would have been able to hear from other people. <laughs> so yeah. eventually when I found my way to actually get around without being unnoticed, Eventually saw the chainsaw guy, and then that became a problem. Yeah, and then that five turns. I was uh, I was a little irritated. I could tell from your look that you were too. <laughs> that uh, we tried for so long to get to do something with the chainsaw guy and never could figure it out. And then we went to the chain, and he says, "I need a chainsaw." <laughs> this is my look. Like you'll you'll hear it in the audio. You hear Shane go. You guys can't see this right now, but. But this is my look. About dead on. <laughs> <laughs> he was very irritated. But I, I, I liked that because it's just like, you know, normally we were trying for so long and that's one thing. But then you're like, you know what you're up against. And he says, I need this. And I know. At first we were like, you know what? Fuck it. The chainsaw guy probably... Doesn't, doesn't have anything doesn't, to do with it. You know, I'm probably not even the person that should be setting them off. Someone else should be on accident or something. Like maybe there should be a cutscene. Yeah. No, I'm the person that has to set it off. You have to kill him. Yeah, I remember the fucking time that uh, I know I got it. I got it right after he said, "I need a chainsaw." Maybe a chainsaw will do this. Which I don't know what goes through people's minds when they grab chains and be like, "I need a chainsaw." You can think of anything else to cut that chain. Break it. I don't know. I mean, it is called a chainsaw. It's true. <laughs> well, I'm having an epiphany here. Just calm. <laughs> so yeah, overall, I'm I'm impressed with the game. I want more out of it, but I am impressed, and it's definitely well worth the play. Yeah. That is one thing. Oh, uh, we hope to. I'm not going to promise you guys anything. We hope to get Alien Isolation and do that after this. Speaking of which, why don't we go ahead and uh, what what new games are we wanting to do? Alien Isolation. I don't, I Daylight's don't probably already done. Is it called Daylight? Yes. Daylight's probably already done, but I'd like to do that too. There's one that I, I don't remember when it comes out, but we definitely want to do it for you. It's the new Silent Hill. Yes, the new Silent Hill. We don't, the demos came out. We haven't played no. the demo. Well, it was a PS4 demo. It, it yeah. didn't come out on the Xbox. Otherwise, we would have did do a video already. But if it's strictly PS4 or something like that, or PS3, then we might have to borrow a PS3 or a PS4 to do it. But, but we'll, we'll try and get it out there, because that's one we definitely want to do, and by far definitely want to play. Oh, yeah. It, it looks amazing. Uh, I'm excited for that. Is there any other ones besides the... I mean, those are pretty much all the horror games that we've got coming up. Yeah, I know they just recently released Outlast on the Xbox One, but we've already, I mean, we could do it again. We could delete our ones, and if you guys want to see more, if you guys are even watching this, do you even care? 
If you want to see Outlast on the Xbox One, leave in a comment below saying that you'd like that. We do have better recording equipment now. We'll yes. get it. Get it we better. were recording off of uh, the beginning recording uh, screen capture, which is an easy cap. It, it records fairly well now that we figured it out. First, I was running it through this program called the Debut, which sucks. Don't do it. <laughs> But I had to run it through debut, then through Camtasia, threw up the screen capture of the debut because I couldn't get it pulled up on Camtasia itself. I had to get it right. pulled up on the debut, record the screen Camtasia. Which, part of the reason he, I, I know you, you did that was because uh, your computer wouldn't hold the program, you said, that uh, came on the disc with yes. the EasyCap. So I've got that, so if we do something on the EasyCap, it does come out better now. But as far as the Xbox One goes, as you know, it, it only hooks up via HDMI. So we yeah. have finally got some recording equipment for it, and that's why we're happy to bring you The Evil Within and other games that's coming out. We have the new HD video? Yeah. Uh, what's it called? Well, the one we got uh, is the, it's, I can't remember which one, but it's one of the Elgato brands. Oh, okay, Elgato. Yeah. Um, I know Roxio Game Capture is coming out with a new one. Problem is, uh, I've heard from everyone else that Roxio game captures. You're better off to go with HD PBRs than Roxio. Yeah. Uh, Roxio looks like a good game capturing program, but it doesn't look like it would record in HD 1080p as well as HD PBR. Like um, 70. Yeah. 720. 720. Um, they do have HD versions of it, but like I said in all the reviews, everyone said. Shouldn't go with it. Shouldn't go with the Roxio. Yeah. And sorry, Roxio, you know, uh, company, you're probably really good at what you do, but. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, you, I mean, you gotta make customers happy, too. Yeah, you gotta make customers happy. And, if and I'm not saying, I'm not saying, if you can afford a Roxio game capture, because I know, like, the un HD one is like 75 bucks. Yeah. Oh, and with everything that uh, you have to buy for the Easy Cap, if you're just wanting to start an off-screen recording, uh, everything you want to buy with the Easy Cap, it will only max out and cost you probably about forty bucks at the max. So it's pretty Maybe cheap. Fifty if you if you get uh, like shipping. Yeah. Or if you can get ten dollars. Well, no, well, shipping. no, I mean, it's more like the screen capture itself is thirteen dollars, and it comes with the program, so you ain't got to worry about the program. Uh, it comes with the program. Um, but it's the other equipment. You may have it in your household. They, you know, um, yeah. you have to have three um, in and out um, AVI cords, three different ones. Uh, you have to have. Yeah, but you already have that. You got to have one going from the. Uh, well, you might not have the ones that go from the cam to capture to the TV. It, it's like uh, something that you hook a DVD player up in. You know, it's got the three AV cords, and then it goes into your or your uh, TV three AV cords. You need three of those. Then you need a uh, three female to female, two female to one female uh, adapters. Mm -hmm. And uh, honestly, working with the EasyCap was probably it's it's been really great. Yeah, I mean, it's been eye opening. It, it definitely got us ready for for working with other capture programs yeah and it's definitely a step in the right direction yeah i mean if you want to spend your money and go buy a roxio by all means go for it but if you want to kind of stay cheap you don't know if you want to do this you don't know how good you're going to be or turn out i don't know how good we are we don't get a lot of views yeah but uh but we like what we do yeah and then it, it's fun to us and we hope you have fun watching it uh if you're watching it you know subscribe yeah subscribe <laughs> Yeah, I mean, if you're you don't even have to what you're watching. I mean, yeah. you don't even have to subscribe the first video. You don't even have to subscribe right now. All you got to do is press that like button or dislike button. Yeah, we just, will know. Yeah, just let us know what what it is that we can make better, or well, not what we can make worse, but what we can make better. Yeah. <laughs> and, and you know, if if you enjoy it and you want to say you enjoy it, then go right ahead. But uh, you know, we're always for learning. So if you have something to say, go say. for it. Uh, I think that's all we really have to talk about. I mean, we've talked about the within. Mm -hmm. Came to the conclusion it's well worth the play. Uh, not quite 
it's not catching our attention through the second and third chapter so Just far. Yet. Yeah, but we will finish it and we will right. then tell you how our views might have changed. And or stayed the same. Yeah. I mean, or gotten worse. Well, that's part of changing. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> and, I mean, we talked about upcoming games that we want to do for, the, for them. And, uh, yeah, I think, that's, I think that's everything. Yeah. Well, um, if you like this video, press the like button. If you want to subscribe, press the sub, 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 subscribe button. And, <laughs> and uh, leave a comment below. Uh, check out, you know, if you want to see the other videos, we'll have descriptions of them in this video. You mean links? In links, this yes, links. <laughs> descriptions. YouTubers. He gets flustered very easily. Right. He's, he's very he's very nervous. But I'm the only one that can audience. say the outro. He is. I don't know why. See, I maybe I it's because I made it. I got the lines down. But I you, but you know I can I just can't do it. When it, when I get to one line, it's like I say that line twice. If we ever somehow start getting a lot of views and stuff like that, and people go back to this video, I started that saying in. Um, First, it started off with me saying, what's up guys, this is C Farmer, and my guests are, and uh, teammates tonight, and they'd say all their uh, gamer tag names. We well, you know, yeah, well, we ended up, you know, we at first we started like, hey, um, Shane, and then it'd be like, fuck, uh, Jack No Box, you know, we got tiring to say each other's gamer tags, because we all know each other. So yeah. that's why now I it's say- It's not like we're gonna post our Personal and now that's why I say, what's up guys, this is Sea Farmer or Cody, whatever you want to call me. And um, I just go by Shane. We use my profile. In fact, uh, in in the first video, and probably the others, when we're on the menu screen, you see a little jack in the box, but you know me as Shane. Probably. Yeah, and I started, this, I started this saying in um, Silent Hill Home, not Silent Hill Home, I mean, Silent Hill Downpour, where um, I got mixed up in the words, and then as I was mixing up those words, like I was watching the video and editing, I was like, man, that, that sounds really cool. I can start doing that now, and I made a saying out of it. And it's what? Like, if you subscribe, subscribe if you like. Like, then subscribe, subscribe, then, then like, like, check, check out our, our sister channel. I added in the check out our sister channels later. Flocko, Flocko, and Shane's Twitter. Shane's Twitter. Which, technically, I, I'm... If, if you look at a Twitter <laughs> that has my name on it, I have not been on it. I, I just... I haven't been able to keep up with that right now. Um, I actually came up with Shane's Twitter and it's good. Yeah, because I, I actually did not have a Twitter. I started it after we started saying check out Shane's, Shane's Twitter. Twitter. So I'm sorry if we, we should were make it for us. We really should do something with your Twitter because like, we always. <laughs> yeah, like we don't even have to. It doesn't even have to be me. We'll just make Shane's Twitter and it's going to be a collective our like, entire group. Yeah, Shane's just a category of what we do. <laughs> Shane's Twitter. All right, well, I have different categories of myself, too. Well, we're going to end this video right now. Um, this is HDWC. Like and subscribe. Subscribe if you like. Like then subscribe. Subscribe then like. Check out our sister channels, Flocko and Shane's Twitter. Maybe we should create a channel called Shane's Twitter. We could. Because I say check out our sister's channels. Shane's Twitter. Sister's channels. Sister's channel. <laughs> Let's check, check out our sister's channel. Hey, we check out the Evil Within sister. videos of ours. I mean, if you're watching someone else's, that's fine. It's just, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, doesn't matter. If if you like the Don't game, like the if you like the game, uh, you know, find a YouTuber you like that's playing it. Yeah. But I mean, I know if, I, if you do like us, that's awesome. I'm I'm excited. Yeah, uh, I started off with the Rad Brad, and the reason why I got so much into it is because I loved his narration. I love all his commentary, which is the same thing, but. <laughs> I love this, you know, commentary on while he was playing the games. He had good, view, you know, he had good like thoughts on it, and like yeah. he, he just brought out a really good thing. PewDiePie is really funny to watch, but I. Yeah, I mean, you, everybody kind of has their their preferred. Yeah, I, I watch I watch game walkthroughs like movies. Yeah, that's how I got into it. Yeah, because like, I just looked at them as movies. I mean, that's that's where we started. That's uh, we we. That's why kind of we started this is because watching them that that definitely inspired us to want to do. Oh so yeah, this. definitely. So uh, I even messaged him. He didn't message. Me. <laughs> I'm sorry, man. It's okay. But yeah, the, I mean, just just find something you like, someone you like. If you if you're interested in this game, 
definitely play it. It's, it's worth it. So, yeah, I guess that's it. Yep. All right, guys. See you later. See you later.